Express route continues to be one of the most popular and commonly used Azure networking technologies. It underpins almost every large enterprise that uses Azure and continues to have a hybrid presence. And despite that, we still see some common anti-patterns with Express Route when it comes to resilience. So let's just try and address some of those in this somewhat back to basics video. But as we'll see, things can get complex pretty quickly. But what I'll present in this video is a simple heuristic for you to make some high level decisions to stop you spinning your wheels on lower level decisions. So let's take this very simple topology here of a single Azure region. In this case, it's UK South. You've got a requirement to connect on-premises into Azure using Express Route. So you deploy a hub and spoke environment and inside of there, you have an Express Route gateway. And then you take a Express Route circuit. So we know that when you deploy an Express Route circuit, you chose at the time of deployment, which point of presence to deploy that in. So let's say we deployed a single express route circuit and I chose the London two point of presence. And that is happening between Microsoft equipment that's hosted in this building here, Telehouse North 2 in Docklands in London. And we stipulate all of this information on the express route providers page and locations page. I'll drop the link below. Here's the documentation I was talking about. There's the London two pop, Telehouse North 2. If I click on that, go through to telehouse's website and it will show you the building details and here are the partners that have got direct connectivity with microsoft inside of that point of presence okay so as a bare minimum we're going to need a circuit we're going to need a gateway and sometimes that's where the discussion ends and it shouldn't end we need to drop down to the lower level details to make sure we're hitting the requirements of our business in terms of high availability. So let's take the minimum viable product and see what we get. Well, we know that inside of a single express route circuit, there's always a primary connection and a secondary, and that manifests itself with multiple physical MSEEs or Microsoft Enterprise Edges inside of that building. So this is again happening inside of one geographical location. And this is a building not owned by Microsoft, it's owned by a uh, it's a carrier neutral facility, it's owned by Telehouse in this example. And let's say you go with one of those carriers that we looked at here. Let's pick one at random. Let's say you work with Interaction. They're going to have some routers as well, which ultimately connect in a resilient fashion to the Microsoft routers. And when you deploy your primary BGP session, your secondary BGP session, they will logically get instantiated on top of these separate resilient physical links but inside of the same building and when you do that if you connect the multiple bgp sessions as we stipulate you'll get an sla for a single express route circuit of 99.95 now you have to get back from the edge network this purple box into your world of virtual networks the blue box and to do that we need a gateway that lives inside of the the world of Azure VNets, etc., and bridges you to the outside world of the BGP that you talk to your network. And we do that by deploying an express route gateway. They come in different shapes and sizes, as our documentation shows. Fundamentally, you've got two big decisions to make, which is how much bandwidth do you need? Do you need one gig, two gig, or 10 gig? Or do you need this level, this level, or this level? And then do you need availability zone awareness for your gateway SKU. If you do, you pick one of these here with the AZ suffix inside of the SKU name. And that segues us nicely into the main heuristic I want to lay out here. When you're deciding, do I need to use an availability zone aware gateway here? Probably the main thing that's helping you decide that is what am I doing in these layers here. So when I deploy compute, storage, data, applications into this Azure region, UK South is a region that supports availability zones. Am I making use of those AZs when I deploy my intent on the platform? For example, when I deploy my VMSSs, am I making sure I'm using underlying VMs in multiple AZs? Am I using zone resilient storage? 
when I deploy things like centralized network services, such as Azure Firewall? Am I making sure that is AZ aware? Fundamentally, that's protecting me if a single AZ inside of UK South goes down. If I've made a business decision that I want to offer services that are AZ risk resilient to my business in cloud by making use of those AZ aware services up here, I want to make sure that my network stack for hybrid connectivity via express route is aligned with that decision. So, okay, I go in here and I make sure that this here is an AZ resilient SKU. So let's say I need 10 gigabits per second of throughput. I pick this SKU here and that's what I deploy inside of my virtual network. So I know that the underlying nodes in the express route gateway are deployed across availability zones and I get that behavior that I would expect in terms of high availability. At that point, a lot of customers might say, okay, great, I've got AZ awareness up here. My network stack is good to go. And then you connect your gateway to your circuit and that's where you leave it. And the main thing here would be to, to share that uh, a really good heuristic is if you're making use of availability zones in your region, in the blue box, then really you should be questioning the use of a single express route circuit here. Why is that? Well, underpinning your decision to use availability zones here is an implicit statement that you want to mitigate the risk of single geographical points of failure when it comes to data centers and collections of data centers. That's what availability zones are, collections of independent data centers with separate power calling network, etc. You've made that decision up here in the blue box, but come back to our single circuit now down in the purple box. What did we say earlier? It's happening inside of a single geographical building despite having these primary and secondary links. So our connectivity in the edge network in the purple box is now becoming out of sync to the availability I'm delivering to my business inside of the blue box. So the heuristic here is if I'm using availability zones, even in a single Azure region, I really need to be thinking about deploying or at least recommending to the business and highlighting the overarching risk. Let's get a second express route circuit. So now I bring that second express route circuit into the play. And if you're working within a city where there's multiple pops, for example, London's got London one pop, London two pop, as we show here in the documentation, this metro availability in terms of pops, one pop delivered by Equinix, LD5, one pop delivered by Telehouse. Let's deploy another express route circuit down here in that pop. Again, it comes with that primary and secondary physical connection. And that applies if I'm using the partner model or express route direct. Let's plumb that connection back into my on-prem network. And then let's establish connections from both of those circuits to my gateway. Now I'm much more in sync in the decisions that I've made, because if I have a failure in the single building that constitutes my second express route circuit, I can still get from on-prem into all of the availability zone aware applications and data that I deployed inside of the Azure region, inside of the blue box. The main takeaway here is even inside of a single Azure region, if you're making use of availability zones to deliver the levels of uptime that your business expects, there's a story here for multiple express route circuits. We of course could go one step further and say, okay, is the blue box sufficient in terms of Azure regions? Most enterprise customers go even further than availability zones and send the high availability conversation to business continuity and disaster recovery. And they make use of second region either in an active passive or active active form. And the point here would be normally when you have the blue and the green boxes deployed, you will find customers have deployed multiple express route circuits here already. So in this design here, we could expand this out by using the same circuits, creating the common bow tie topology. It's very common to find this pattern in a multi-region, so multiple regions, multiple circuits. But again, the simple heuristic that I'm landing here is Availability zones in one region should already have you thinking multiple express route circuits for my hybrid topology.
Okay, thanks for watching this Back to Basics video. Hope you found it useful. Check out the links below to further your learning and catch you in the next one.